Uh, on an Anderson's video. So welcome Luca, Luca Ferroni. Thank you. Um, and here's a funny story for you all. Uh, back in the summer, and I don't even know if you know this story, but back in the summer, I'm watching Glastonbury on TV. Okay. We watched the uh, Stormzy set, you know, the big finale. Um, and there's some breakdown in the middle of the of the Stormzy set where the, the drummer, the bass player, and the guitar player just do this insane little, like, 30 second thing and I'm like straight on social media going who the fuck is the guitar player in the Stormzy band anyway and then a few months later or I'm talking to Neil my friend Neil at Fender about this amazing thing he's like oh yeah Luca he's like we've just done some stuff with him and he did the Stormzy thing it's like do you want to get him on Anderson's TV I'm like yeah so welcome Thank That's you. That's basically Thank you for the sort of the me. short, you know, well, reason. I didn't, I didn't even know. So yeah, I was honestly, I was absolutely. You can see that on YouTube as well. Pete and I were watching it yesterday Watch it. to remind ourselves. It's a that is some band, isn't it? Right. I mean, some level of such band. a brilliant musicianship on that band. Um, so yeah, you're here predominantly today because you know the lovely people at Fender. Are, obviously, you've Thank been you. playing um, their new Ultra. Telecasters, so we're going to talk a little bit more about that and why you use it. But hey, we're just going to talk about life, the universe, and everything. So, right. um, how long have you been playing as a as a touring session guy? Then I've been touring for the past five years professionally in the UK. Mm -hmm. But I've started my professional life, so called, when I was fourteen, back in Italy. Wow. So yeah. So what professional, as in as in like paid to play nice. music. That's cool, yeah, man. And how old were you when you picked up the guitar? Pick, picked it up. I was one. One? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. That's I think a that's funny story. Officially now the youngest ever. I think Guthrie Govan said he was three. Might have even been okay. two, but well, you're one. Well, I couldn't one. really play. But, uh, yeah, yeah, my first birthday, I got this like little tiny guitar, but like a real one, not like a toy. Brilliant. And that was just the thing I would always play with forever in my lifetime, basically. And then when I was about three or four I started playing things resembling like a bar chord and my dad would play it a little bit it was like hold on a sec let me hear what you're playing and then like apparently I played something like an F and it sounded cool and it was like well all right let me show you a few I was chords. about 23 before I could play an F <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing and then just did you did you go to some sort of uh, conservatoire or something in Italy I you... did that but I did that privately when I was 12 Basically, I never wanted to study mm -hmm. in any academy or any school or anything because I was like, no, I'm going to play whatever I want to play. Yeah. And like, I can play whatever I want to play and stuff like that. And I didn't want to have any sort of like direction to necessarily have to yeah. follow. But then when I was about 11, I went to some like classical guitar masterclass, which I never played classical guitar right. specifically before that. And I did that, so started it in that masterclass. And one of the teachers there was from one of the conservatories, basically. And he was like, you know what? You could come back next year, give the exams. And if you managed to do it, you would be the youngest like <laughs> Italian person to manage to do that. Yeah. And I was like, is that real? He's like, yeah, I think so. And so I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to do it. So I did it in one year and it went well. That's but, amazing. Yeah. And who were the electric guitar players when you were, you know, in your teens that you aspired to be? Let me think. So I was listening to like Joe Satriani, Steve Vai and all that. Mm -hmm. But probably the most influential ones would have been Brian May, Steve Lukather, I think, Jeff Beck. Yeah, awesome. those three probably. Pat Metheny later on. Right. And yeah. Um, I mean, I'm 
you obviously got started touring when you were young. What, what was your first big break? I think we could consider the biggest one the one in the UK. So I started gigging properly with Craig David. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah I did an, an arena tour when he came back. Yeah, I was going to say that the, his sort of second coming, wasn't exactly, it? Exactly, sort of, yeah. yeah that's his awesome. second life, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we did a UK tour with him and then I like kept on playing with him for the following years. Mm. So we did like summer festivals and all that. That was fun. That's amazing. And what was it that... Um, were you happy to kind of fit in with more of those? Because well, I'm... I, Definitely the Stormzy thing, you could you could definitely feel the band had like a gospel vibe around yeah. it. Um, I, don't, I know you've done Emily Sande as well. Yeah. I mean, is, that, is it all similar in that kind of very sort of gospel, solely funky kind of genre of music? I, yeah, I think there's kind of a tendency in the UK, probably now, I don't know if this thing is going to last because these things normally like come and go. But I find yet yeah, there is like a common denominator mm-hmm. and like the gospel-y solely yeah. type of thing is there and like funnily enough when i came to the uk i kind of discovered a new way of playing and it was mostly revolving around like fusion jazz but like modern mm-hmm. kind of gospelish type of jazz fusion and it was totally new to me i was like what is this and for some reason i find that the players kind of have to have that element in the modern pop uk world because most of that element is in there and like mm. most of the mds i work with they tend to go that direction which i love personally mm. and it gives it a nice little live vibe it's such a, it's such a great as i said i i think the level of musicianship in some of those bands is is in is crazy high level um tell us about the the the, the fender kind of association of were you always drawn towards telecasters yes yeah. and... i grew up with fender basically right so yeah i'm now Proudly using Fender, but I've always been for my lifetime, basically. When I started playing, I couldn't really afford an electric guitar. So luckily I made friends with like my little town, uh, the shop owner, basically. Mm -hmm. And he had like this brilliant Stratocaster. I was like, can I please use it? Can I please use it? And like, he would give it to me and I would use it. So that would be my main guitar. And then later on, when I was like a teenager, I, I was a bit more towards like Jackson and like, pointy headstock kind of things <laughs> but then back to strapped because that was still my first love although i then discovered the telly which i never kind of used before and that happened probably like six years ago or something okay and like from that moment onwards i was like wow this is the sound i've been looking for forever and i started using tellies and i now mainly use tellies um, and what was the what do you what do you think is the 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 difference in the tone then between a Strat and a Telecaster? So firstly, just the, uh, how full it is in the telly and the fact that, so I assume like if I'm playing with a clean tone, like just a normal clean, right? On a Strat, if I want to sound a little more jazzy without me touching the tones or anything, mm-hmm. it can happen, but on the telly, it's a little easier to just go. And in the Strat, you would still feel its single coil. Whereas in the Teddy, it's, it's got a full body type of sound, which I find easier to kind yeah. of like find the right sound and for, for where I need. It's just a little more versatile, I find. Plus, the bridge pickup is normally just like mm. angrier. It's just nice. Whereas in the Strats, normally could be a little skinnier sounding yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. And then the mid position is just the best. <laughs> it's just what I've been looking for for my whole life. Also, I find, this is a personal opinion, so I don't know if this is going to be shared by your viewers, but I find like the Strat can be a little bit um, like associated to some errors. Like if you use the positions in the middle where the pickups are together, it kind of sounds a bit like the 80s or it kind of sounds a bit like Prince or it kind of sounds like a bit like, I don't know. And all that, right? So right now in the pop world I'm in, I can't really always use that. If I do use that, I'm kind of tapping into some sort of tradition of some specific time, basically. Whereas with the Teddy's just perfect. 
I find like it's never gone out of fashion basically. And this is just like, you can use it for a fan. Or you can use it for like arpeggios. It just sounds perfect. There's nothing I feel the lack of basically. It's a, it's a beautiful guitar. I mean, you, your journey through Telecasters then, you presumably started with a more affordable, what a Mexican made or something. So I started with a Baja, if that's the correct pronunciation. Yeah, it's a great And guitar. it wasn't mine once again. Yeah. So that, it, like it was a friend of mine guitar. I was playing a gig like a blues gig and I wanted a strap that was back in Italy and I couldn't find one and it was like yo try this daily I was like mm, don't really like that it's like <laughs> trust me try it I was like nah chunky neck that's not try it and I was like wow I'm gonna buy a telly now so then I came back to London started looking on Gumtree and stuff yeah I couldn't afford like a very expensive guitar so I found a brilliant Mexican standard which I still have on tour with me that's the like swire color. Which I color? Think, like blue and white and like a swire. I think oh, oh swirly color. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Amazing. And I changed the pickups on that, changed all the electronics and everything, but I still use it. And I paid it like nothing. Second hand on Gumtree. And it's still yeah. one of my favorite guitars. And then after that, so I started using uh, American Professional, I think it is. Mm -hmm. Is it? Uh, the performer, yeah. Right. So humbucker and single coil with the humbucker that you can split. Yeah. And that's just an amazing instrument. If you haven't, please check it out. Because I didn't really know it until I tried it. And I tried it and I was like, what is this? <laughs> it sounds like a quintessential telly. Still, but you can get some sounds out of it that are not telly sounds on the same guitar. And it feels amazing, sounds amazing. It's not like the most expensive one. It's pretty affordable and it's just unbelievable. Like I've been on tour recently and every single day at Soundcheck, I would just go there earlier <laughs> to play all of the tellies on my own to just enjoy and be like, ah, and then all right, this one. Do you, ah. have, have, do you ever, I, I, do you have total control from the MD over the guitars that you choose or are some of them quite specific? About yeah, it depends on the gig. Be, it depends right. on the gig. Mostly I can choose whatever I want to use as long as it fits whatever they're looking for, the sound-wise. The, the sound. Sound-wise, yeah, yeah. The visual, I don't think I've ever been told anything about visuals so far. I'm surprised. Yeah. I always thought that was that would be almost more... When you, you right. know, when you look at the amount of money and staging that goes into something like that Stormzy yeah, set, exactly, yeah. you sort of think, I bet you if you turned up with... What, what wouldn't you be allowed to play? I bet if you turned up with some sort of pink Jackson, no, you, or then maybe they go, that's I cool. I think, yeah, but, I think they would let me use it. Yeah, probably. maybe you're right. Well, that's good to I know. I, like I, I always telly. assumed it'd be like, no, 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 everybody has to have this color guitar and... No, and like, gladly so. It's yeah. not really about that, or at least not in my experience. But sometimes, like the MD would be like, I need that specific guitar for that. Like, that needs a strap. Yeah. So I always have to have a strap, a telly, at least, just like the, the most common ones. Yeah. Or like, nah, that's a jazzy sound, you need like a big body guitar and stuff, and like that you have to have. And yeah. you have to use, obviously, if they want you to. But normally I just decide myself. <laughs> <laughs> now, that the Ultra, which came out not long ago, you know, maybe yeah. a couple of months ago, and when Pete and I first did the, the, the video for that, we, we were instantly every single thing about the guitar we preferred to the, the previous Elite. Yeah, elite we like yeah. the feel of it, we like the look of it, we like the tone of it. Um, but what, what was your initial reaction when you when you got to play the, the Ultra? So when I got it in my hands, I was like, wow, this is like first thing, mm -hmm. which I love. Like if I'm playing for like hours on a stage, I want to like the instrument. I don't want to be like, <laughs> oh, my neck, my shoulders. And like, I'm young, but I'm old body-wise. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm already destroyed. <laughs> so anyway, so that was the first, like the very first feel. Then it looks modern, which I love. So like auto locking tuners and obviously like the contour shape mm -hmm. of it. I just love it. Yeah. Just I basically my dream instrument is something that sounds vintage because I'm not really into like modern sounding guitars because I really love to tap into traditions in guitar sounds. So I feel like I always want something that I can kind of associate to something pre-existing, because obviously like I grew up listening to records. So if I'm looking for that guitar sound, I want something that kind of sounds like something I know, yeah. but then take it to the modern era kind of thing, which this is basically 
it. <laughs> so it feels modern. The neck is just unbelievable. Yeah. I'm, I love like skinny necks, but like round ones, not like shredders type yeah. of like flat necks. Yeah. And this is definitely, it. I think this is probably one of, if not the best neck I've ever played. Yeah. so far ever i think that's what we felt on the ultra was right. it? and it, the finish yeah. everything about it really the color even. great necks really like, great it's not necks. yellow it's not like white <laughs> it's just perfect and then yeah also this is super comfy mm. just perfect <sighs> like when I, we were having a conversation earlier on about me being fatter because i used to be a very fat <laughs> And yeah, this would have been very handy back then. Because <laughs> otherwise, like when I was using a telly back in the day, it was always me. Like, <laughs> it was a weird way of playing it. Like. <laughs> so yeah, this helps. And what else? Oh, the S1 switch. Yes. Oh God. I've been using it so much. Like, I'm gonna quickly show you what. So I sound like that pretty like atmospheric and stuff. If I wanna play arpeggios, Okay. Sounds awesome, but look at this. I mean, I'm not losing any of the clarity. I'm not losing any of the telly feel, but I'm gaining body. I'm gaining weight. Yeah, which I lost. It's really interesting <laughs> listening to you because you, you, you know, clearly for a you know young person, you you've obviously been on a real sort of journey of sound you you talked before we were you know you were playing the guitar before we, the cameras came on you went and you went listen to this it's like a piano and it's just yeah. like you're you're really listening for um note definition and clarity in a way that you know i think not that it's necessarily right or wrong but you know some guitarists just want to plug in and like almost just get like a dirty fuzzy noise and it and it doesn't and that's the right vibe for certain kinds of yeah. music but you sound you know, you're really looking to try and hear each individual note that you play. Yes, and, exactly. Um, is there any, and is, again, is that another thing that you think drew you to the Telecaster just because it is such a pure sort of, there's so much clarity around each note? Definitely, yeah. I think coming from the little classical guitar journey I had, mm. I'm like, after that, I've always been looking for an, an electric instrument with, which would allow me to kind of get my classical thing mm -hmm. on it as well and like some electric guitar especially humbuckers it just doesn't allow you to have that type of feel mm -hmm. and like if i play with my nails like <laughs> oh, that note was ugly anyway just had it with you <laughs> um so even Listen to this, if I play here, or if I play it like with my hand a little bit like that with my nails, sounds so sweet. And obviously if I use like a crunchier sound, let's see if I find one, this is, yes. I want to hear every single note. Yeah. And when I'm using like even a like distorted sound, let's see, I should have one here. Yeah. Let's use this for now. I want to be able to distinguish every single note, especially in the low end. Yeah. So. It's very distorted, but still. Yeah. You can feel every single little thing, and even with the pick according to the way you use the pick. It's like... It's got some good chords. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Um, how important or useful are the noiseless pickups when you're doing a big stage show, like a, you know, a Glastonbury style stage show? Like, that is extremely important. Because like if you if you have hum, it's just gonna be mm. a problem in that type of scenario. Obviously, if you're at home, who cares? Cool, you can just like move around and be like, <laughs> okay, more silent here. But in there, that's the last thing you have to think about. Yeah. And sound engineers are gonna love you if you have <laughs> this type of pickups. It's just they're gonna love you. Yeah. And I I don't feel like compared to some models of the past, I don't feel like you're losing anything. 
here. Like the normal objection to noiseless pickups would be, ah, they sound a little bit plasticky, they sound a little bit lifeless. Yeah. I mean, like... This is like real telly yeah. sound. It's a great this sound. Is I mean, it's obviously you're a great player as well, so it oh, kind of all, all helps. But no, it's... it's, <laughs> it's um, and it's a, I just think it's such a... I haven't met anybody yet that doesn't think that that Texas T with the silver scratch plate and you get the gold scratch plate if you buy the Strat, it just looks great. You're probably, if, if you guys are watching this, you're probably just thinking that Luke has got a black guitar here. Yeah. But he doesn't. I don't oh, know if you... I don't. It's like this, it's this very dark brown golden metallic. Sparkly, yeah. So good. And it becomes kind of brownish according to the light. Yeah, as I was saying earlier, on, like I wasn't taught. And at sound check with the different lights, I would just be like, "Guys, look at this!" And then <laughs> later on, like, "Guys, look at this now!" Like, it's just amazing. Um, so I want to talk about just generally the rig, though. When you're doing, uh, I mean, typically, will will you will you do a tour, and that'll be your number one thing for for a few months, and then there'll be a different artist, or are you chopping and changing from different artists all the time? It depends. Obviously, if there's a big tour, I would do that as a priority. Mm -hmm. And that would be like a big, big chunk of work. Yeah. And then on to the next thing whenever I'm free, basically. So now I've been on tour with Emily Sander for the past two months. Mm -hmm. So that's been basically my life now. And now I'm back. I've been back for like a couple of days. And I'm kind of like in the outlook for what's going on. I've got a few things coming. But obviously, like you have to see what's convenient to do yeah and like some of the things overlap so you have to be kind of clever and yeah. understand what what is the best investment career-wise obviously financially as well mm. and kind of compensate with do i like it what do i like the most what's most ch more, more challenging yeah what do i want to experiment with now but yeah that's basically my life when i'm not on tour i normally like play around in london or I mostly like produce. Okay. Yeah. I write for artists as well. I've got my little studio, do loads great. of productions. But, and so you, you've, uh, I noticed you're using the Kemper. Yeah. And I, and, I'm, and I think that was why I was asking about in terms of the gigs and were they, were they, was it, do you tend to put a rig together for a tour or do you just end up going, I'm just going to use the Kemper and find my, the sounds that I'm familiar with or? Yeah, so I almost exclusively use Kemper. I haven't been using any amp since I started using the camper, basically. So that's my setup. I don't feel like I need to use an amp. Mm -hmm. I love this thing. Presumably everything's in here on stage anyway. Is so what's the point? Every single time, mm -hmm. yeah. So what's the point, firstly? And then second, it actually sounds better in the ears. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I normally have one rig. My main rig doesn't really change. What changes is I've got a huge board with analog pedals still. And those change. So if I need anything specific, I would yeah. just like swap around and like. So are you using right you're using the Kemper predominantly just for an amp model, and then you're just using a traditional pedal board to go with it to. to, to, to Not really. I mean, I'm using it for amp modeling, but also for effects. Okay. So my pedal board <clears throat> is organized in a way that all the pedals I have there are in the input stage. So it would be like three overdrives normally or two overdrives and something else yeah. weird. And then I have like an Ottawa, which I use a lot. Wami, just for like Octaver stuff or like weird noises. Yeah. Wah, just cause I wanna have it there. I could use it from the camper, but I don't wanna use this lot from there. Yeah. So just have a like 70s crybaby in there. Yeah. Volume, booster, compressor. So that's what I use from the board basically. And then delays, courses, modulation in general and reverbs are always from the camper. So yeah, that's basically my setup. And I also use a, <coughs> a preamp before the camper. Right. Okay. 1073. Yes. You said. Yeah. So, so yeah, I normally have a big yeah. rack behind me with like two campers, the 1073 and the chain is guitar to the 1073, boost it up a little bit. And then out of there into the camper, it's actually a guitar pedal board, 1073 Kemper, basically. And and even when you're in the studio and recording stuff, are you still predominantly using the Kemper for your sound? Yeah, actually you don't do, sort of yeah. think, I'm just going to go get my JTM 45 and my twin and, and my AC30. Exactly. You're just happy with it. It's just... I am, because most of the times, like if I'm recording for a client, mm. they love it. I've 
I've never been in the situation where a client would come back to me and be like, you know, I don't really dig that guitar sound. Most of the, the times they would just email me like, what's that guitar amp you use? Like, amp is brilliant. I'm like, uh, yeah, something. I used amp, I can't remember. But like, yeah, that was the camper. So yeah, I don't really feel the need of amps. I sometimes use them if I want to look for anything specific, like a Vox tremolo or yeah. like a Fender Twin, like vintage sound, like that is... You just can't find the real deal. It's, it's, it's absolutely amazing. I said, cool looking guitar, sounds yeah, great. No, no. I can, yeah, I've met so many people now for whom, you know, Kemper is the right solution for, you know, I mean, it's, yeah. it's such a cool sounding unit as well. I'm loving the fact that you're still using individual pedals and you, you, have, have. you have to come back with your big pedal board one day and we'll do some Yeah, other. that would be nice. It would be that great, would be nice. it would be great. So as far as the, the future is concerned though, is, uh, have you got more stuff lined up with you know, Emily Sander and Storms in or do you not know? So yeah, we should have something with Emily probably in the summer. We don't know yet. And there should be stuff coming with Stormzy, which I can't disclose right now, but there should be stuff. Well, good yeah. luck, man. And, and yeah, this is... if you could have your sort of, um, is there something like the inner sort of, you know, the, the, the kid who was 14 or 15, if you could choose one band to you know get that phone call from and go can you come and do this gig who would I've that never be thought about that, you know? really let me think about it all right fast forward it because i'm <laughs> gonna think for like five minutes so <laughs> i'm just gonna move very quickly it's all it. fine <clears throat> let me think it would i don't know if there's a gig i would want to play it's like a weird one it would that would be like kurt elling jazz singer I, who yeah. sorry kurt elling it's no, like a modern crooner type Okay, of yeah, thing. I don't know. It's just like a jazzy thing. Or like a Ronnie Scott's kind of vibe. Kind of, just yeah, but intimate and... it's like the good mixture between like jazz improvised and like arranged stuff. Very nice tones and like very good melodic playing and stuff. That's a gig I would want to do. Otherwise, let me think. Band? I don't know. You don't see yourself doing like a G3 thing. So you've got like, yeah. you know, Steve one side, Joe the other, yeah. maybe Ingve uh, a bit further down there. Yeah, sure. the G5, like. Exactly. And Petrucci somewhere. Could yeah. be. You never know. Never you know. never know. Maybe. Anyway, look, man, it was just absolutely great Thank to you. meet you. Uh, honestly, you know, check Luca out. I'm sure, you know, I'll put uh, links to his website underneath. I'm sure, you know, I'd love to check out some of your own music as well. But, and as I said, if you want to see, uh, you want to have your mind blown, just go and watch the, the, the Stormzy uh, set. I know that style of music might not be everyone's cup of tea, but the band is smoking in thank that. You. So thank you very much for coming in. Thank, thank you, you, Fender, for inviting and arranging all this. Uh, again, I'll put links where you can find out more about the Ultra Telly below. Um, it's great, I think, to, to hear from a, a professional musician who genuinely, genuinely, you know, there's not like a paid endorsement yeah, or anything. He just no. loves this guitar. Yeah, I mean, try it. You're going to love it too. Because, like, it's unbelievable. Wicked. All right, man. Anyway, thanks a lot for tuning in, guys. We'll see you in a video soon. Bye bye. Bye. Oh, actually, ciao. <laughs> <laughs>